my dears, this is Sarah from SheHoldsDearly.com and today I'm going to get you caught up on what is going on in my living room and also I need your advice. So I'm hoping to get this done before the holidays, but I have a few uh, speed bumps that I've run into per the usual, and I thought you guys could help me with it. So I painted the door in the past. I painted it with milk paint, with a navy blue milk paint from Miss Mustard Seed, and I really like it, and it's really turning out to be the inspiration for the whole room. So then I painted the French door into our walk-in storage area, and I painted that. I just used the same color paint. So I knew I wanted navy in here, and I wanted to go really traditional English cottagey feel and use dark woods and some farmhouse feels, garden feels, but some formality mixed in as well. So I found this rug that I really like from Rug USA. And what I liked about it, it's a nice big size, I liked that it was the natural rug, so that like rustic little bit of a farmhouse feel, but then it also has the navy band the little trim on the outside and I just I just thought it was unique and brought a little bit of formality in so I love the rug. Okay, so then that brings me to the furniture. So I found this baby on Facebook Marketplace. I probably paid a little bit too much for it, but I really like it and I put, okay, I'll tell you. I paid 600, which is a little much for me, but I rationalized it because this is a Urban Outfitters cushion which is like 300 bucks. So that really sweetened the deal for me, and I, it's so comfortable. It's really great to take a nap on. So this itself isn't comfortable. My husband was like, oh, are we supposed to watch movies on that thing? Uh, but the, the mattress part is really comfortable, and I can beef it up with more pillows. So I think we're okay there. Then I bought this couch from Hay Needle. I love the color. It feels, the fabric feels really good. It is very um, stiff, though. Like it feels like my grandma's couch back in the day. And so you can sit on it, you know, it feels kind of formal, um, but it's not cozy. You don't want to pile a bunch of people. And though my least favorite part about this couch is that it's really low back. So you, you can't, you know, you can't lean back on it. And where I have it now, I feel like it really boxes off the whole room and it kind of creates more of a hallway feel than what I want. I want this room to feel welcoming because the front door opens right into it. So. I'm gonna sell the couch. I paid 500 for it. I think I could actually probably get $500 for it. I haven't had it that long, there's nothing wrong with it. It was a cheap couch as far as couches go. I think I need to sell it and I think I need two chairs and kind of angle them and have them have higher backs. So it creates the curve, the curve that I will be talking about here that I don't have enough curves in this room. So if I angle two chairs and then I make them more cozy, I think, I think we'll be happier in the long run. That's a bummer, but oh well, life goes on. It seems like every room I do, there are about four things that I have to backtrack on. So if you're finding you have to do that, don't feel bad. I think you're pretty normal. And then I think I need to finish a slip cover on one of these other recliners, but I think I'm gonna put both of those out opposite side because they're just so great when we're watching a movie to just, you don't just want to sit there, like you want to lounge. So I need a spot for like five adults to be able to just lounge during the movie time. Okay, that brings me to the coffee table. I built this coffee table. It was a $9 table from Goodwill and I flipped it upside down and I put a bunch of dowels around it and wood on top and casters on the bottom. And I wanted it to look like a vintage chicken crate because this house was built by a man named John Swanson in 1906 and he owned the Swanson chicken farm and so I just love that 
we have a piece like right off the bat when you walk in that really speaks to that. It's a little bit square, number one, and I feel like I could use some more curves in this very rectangular room. So I am looking at this coffee table from Pottery Barn. Very beautiful, it's marble topped. Um, it's a little bit small, but the other thought is that I will take this chicken crate and stain it darker and then kind of like rough it up, make it look a little bit older, add a little plaque on it that says maybe like Swanson Chicken Farm and add some gold nails and things. I, this is the picture that's inspiring me. This is an original chicken crate and so I was like gonna copy the feel of it. I really like the sentimental Sarah just really wants to pull off that project. So tell me what you think of that. I'm very happy with the TV. I showed you that, the frame TV and the dresser underneath is working out fine. Um, it really has the feel of art over, over a buffet type feel. So I'm happy with that. That brings me to the piano. The piano was my grandfather's, so of course that's sentimental. No one else in the family wants it, so a little bit of pressure there. I painted it with milk paint years ago. It's one of my earlier blog posts. And I do really like it. Now, I don't know that it's traditional English cottage. And here's the thing. A couple months ago, the family, the John Swanson family, who I know who built this house, texted me and said, do you want the original piano to the house? And I'll show it to you. It's gorgeous. I actually really, really like it. All emotions aside, I like their piano better than my piano. Uh, but I have a little bit of I have a little bit of stress from the fact that this was my grandfather's and he used to play music on it for me. And in fact, this is this is his piano music that I have framed behind me. The other thing is I hate moving pianos. They make me want to cry. And nobody wants a piano. You like can't sell a piano. You can't give you can't even give them away. Um, so then what do I do with my piano? And then do I paint the other one? Should I paint it like a light, like a blue to match this shelf I'm gonna do over here? So do I go through with switching off the pianos? Like, is it worth it? And then do I paint the Swanson piano? I tell them, they, they offer me stuff once in a while for the house, and I tell them, you have to understand me. Like, this is what I do for a living. I remake antiques and so there's a chance that I may change this antique if you give it to me and you have to like release all claims of what I do with this. But I promise you this, it will still be enjoyed. <laughs> so I made, I remade their, his desk chair, I turned it into a rocker and they were okay with that. But okay, so piano question, tell me what to do. Then I have the window seat and I'm thinking about painting the trim, actually all the trim in the room. I could paint like a really light gray. I don't know. I tend to overdo things, okay? So hold me back if I'm like, if I'm just, I got too many ideas and all of them together is just too much. Okay, I definitely think though that this French mattress, I made the French mattress, but the dog has since gotten up on it too many times and like tore out the tufting. So I need to clean it and actually tuft it with real buttons. I just tufted it with thread and it was just it just couldn't hold up. So I need to do that. I could get some fresh fresh pillows in here. Okay, then I found this desk on Facebook Marketplace, I believe. Offer up. Maybe it was offer up. Yeah. And paid on a I don't know, 260 or something for that. And I'm trying to decide if I want to paint it. I'm leaning towards not painting it. And I will do our white slip covered chairs there. And maybe even two side by side. The kids do use it for their college work. And then um I made a bulletin board. It was a knockoff version of a Ballard Designs board. I have it up in my room. And I think I'll just make the exact same one. I have enough supplies and just hang that over that desk. Then I got this chandelier on Craigslist for 60 bucks. I took it all apart. It was this like bright chrome. It actually looked a little cheap, the chrome part. So I painted it gold. And now I feel like the gold still looks a little bit cheesy. <laughs> So I'm about to take it apart again and try to match it to this sconce up here, which I, I'm liking still. I was gonna replace that and now I think, I think it works in here. And then adding a couple crystals and I just hot glue them on. You can totally do that. Adding just a, a couple of crystals just to tie the two pieces together. I think, I, I, feel, I feel good about that. And then that brings me really to the drapes, the dog corner, and the bookcase. I really need a spot for our dog. And, and she wants to be on furniture. I, bad, 
dog mom did not teach her to not get on the furniture. She doesn't go in her beds, but she thinks it's just fine to get on the couch. And I haven't been able to break her of that. So I feel like maybe I should just make peace with this dog and get her a piece of furniture that's really just hers. So I bit the bullet and I, I bought a really nice settee. I shouldn't have bought a nice settee, but I've been working on this for months and I just was like, I give up. This is the one I want. How can I give it to her and somehow keep it from being ruined? So I bought this settee from Wayfair. It's not here yet. I think it's gonna get here by Thanksgiving. And it fits perfectly in that corner. Then there's this company called paw.com and they have really awesome pet things. So I ordered a, it's a memory foam bed for a dog. Just thin, but it's super comfy. And it has a white fur cover on it, like the sheepskin ones, those are really awesome ones you can get um, that I, I love using them in my decorating, but, but you can't wash them. Well, this one you can wash. You take it off and you put it in your washing machine. So I thought I would just drape the white fur over the settee and that can be her spot. And I hope she likes it. It doesn't feel secluded because she's off in the corner. I don't think so though, but dogs kind of like to be alone sometimes. And then I paid $2 for this blue shelf. I'm thinking I'll put it up above her spot. Her name is Kira. So it'll be Kira's corner. And then I'll hang the, her leash, her leather leash and her collar when she's not wearing it. And just put a cute jar of dog treats up on the shelf. And then I have a thing for paint by number paintings. I think they're super cute. And they just add this like cool vintage charm to what, whatever. So there's shops on Etsy where you can send any picture you want in and they have some computer program and they translate it into a paint by number painting for you. They send it back to you. So I thought I would paint a, a portrait of her and I have a couple frames I could, I could use and hang that under the shelf and that's Kira's corner. So tell me if that's cute, if that's gonna work. And then the bookcase is off to the left of the front door. I think I'll probably just freshen up some, some of the decorations They've been there a long time. And then what I wanna do, and I think this might be me being too much, but I really wanna do a tutorial where I show you how to starch fabric and use it like wallpaper. That's how they used to do it. It was kind of a, I think it was a World War II decorating thing that women would do. I thought about doing like a chocolate brown checkered fabric with like checks that are like that big and like wallpaper in the back of this bookcase but I don't know if it's gonna to be too much with these drapes. So that's another question. Tell me what you think of that. Okay, very last question. I know this is long, but thank you for coming to my house and helping me out like a good friend. So I have already started this project. I'm hoping to have the tutorial for you soon, but I bought this beautiful linen fabric and it has sort of a block print detail on it. It took like eight weeks to come in. I could order more, but then I would have to wait. And I made one and it has the pinch pleats, which I'm happy with. I feel like on windows this big in this room, it's looking a little cheap. They weren't cheap, but I don't know if I need to make, you know, like four panels for each of these big windows. So then it, and then just open them up, you know, put two on each side. So it feels really thick and wide. Or if I should bring in white curtains and I could have some embroidery on those white curtains and have the brown and white, and then the white sheer ones inside. I don't know if I'm getting too detailed or if that's pretty and cottagey. You guys are awesome. I love my followers so much. I'm so thankful for you. I learned so much from you in your comments and I appreciate your thoughts. So sometimes I just get stuck in my own space, you know? So I am going to um, look forward to reading your comments. And I also have a subscriber library if you wanna get more tutorials just like in one click, I'll get, there's a password that you'll get and you can get recipes and eBooks and printables and tutorials and things. So that's available for you below as a thank you. And if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button so that I can send you more videos on how to make interior design easy. All right, take care. I'll talk to you soon.